Hey everybody, so I had a client ask me, uh, what do I do about hand care? Uh, I just got my first rip and what do I do? Okay, so, um, but I'm in my bathroom right now because I believe that to, uh, what do you do about your first rip or how do you take care of rips? You try to avoid them at all costs, right? So um, the tip here is really this prep work should really happen in your bathroom or in your shower or something like that before you ever get to the gym. So. If you notice here, I've got two hands here. So this is one hand here, and you can see, sorry about that pinky, it's it's a little extra there. But you see here, there's just some like, there's calluses here, and there's a little bit of dead skin around there, okay? Now, uh, back in the day, my friends would tell you that I tore a lot. And let me just give you a disclaimer here. I, I hate when clients tear their hands because it really ruins their training week for the most part. And I know that maybe back in the day in 2012, it was like this badge of honor. And now, honestly, when a client like posts their bloody hands on you know Facebook or whatever, I was like, please stop. You're losing us members possibly. Like, And really, it's because like no one really wants to tear their hands. And as cool as it may seem at the time, when you go to wash your hands later on that day or uh, you go to wash your hair, uh, which is one of the worst things, or you go to pick up a barbell later on that week, it really just changes your training week. And so when it changes your training week, now you can no longer do the exercises like you wanted to, it takes down your intensity and takes down your overall you know, ability to grow that week. So um, my goal is for you to not tear. But one of the things about tearing is um, it's warm in the gym, it's humid in the gym, uh, no matter how you slice it, everybody's gonna sweat a little bit more. When you do, your hands soften, and that's typically what creates these tears but there's a lot of hand care that can be done to minimize those. So I've got a few tools that I like to use and then I'll tell you how to treat the tear once it happens, so, or if it happens. So uh, one is this trusty, what's, uh, it's a callus razor, okay? So I used to, back in the day before I knew about callus razors, I used to use like my razor that I might use on my face. I use a different one, right? A disposable razor. And you can actually shave down on the calluses a little bit. Now, I'm gonna show you just a little bit what that looks like but I just shave it down, it's nice and light, and it's just a sharp razor blade there, but it begins to take away some of that dead skin. And what we're trying to do is create less of a buildup of skin where the, the bar, the pull-up bar, the barbell, the dumbbell, whatever else, doesn't create this massive like bulge that's gonna create pressure to tear that callus off. So uh, the, you need a little bit of callus and protection on your hands so that your hands don't hurt so bad, but you need to have a healthy balance of a little bit of built up skin, not so much that it's gonna wind up tearing. Um, the other option you have is the, the callus razor gets a little bit intense, right? It, it's a lot. Um, but you have these, uh, this is my wife's, I borrowed hers. Um, we have had pumice stones before. You could use a pumice stone, but those pumice stones are really just like kind of a rough like rock basically, and you could shave those. Now, what, what I recommend doing is any hand care that you're gonna do, you're gonna do it once the skin is moist or has been wet or something like that. So I do that either in the shower or right as I get out of the shower because it's a little bit easier to, to peel. So I had gotten out of the shower a little bit ago, so my hands are still a little soft. Um, but if you have a pumice stone, I would just keep it in your shower and then you can just scrub on those things while you're in the shower once that skin is, is wet. Okay, and what it does just take down some of that layers of skin just enough. And you notice here, I've got one on my pinky that's a little bit more built up. So I'll just shave that down a little bit more. I really like the pumice stone over the, um, the razors, unless you got a really big one. And you would do that on both hands, okay? So, um, so that's how we care for our hands. You don't do that every day. You definitely don't do it like immediately the day before or right before you're gonna get on a pull-up bar or whatnot. Um, just because sometimes if you put too much work on your hands, you can actually make the hands a little sore. And so then when you go grab the bar, it feels different or it hurts more. So you wanna do this like, you know, maybe on a weekly basis, maybe on an every, every couple of weeks as you see it built up, but not just immediately before a, a grippy type workout. Um, that being said, okay, Josh, that's great. Thanks for the prep work now, but what if I actually tear, what do I do? Um, so uh, some people know this, some people don't, but I was an athletic trainer uh, for a number of years, and that's really what my degree is in. So one of the things that we had to focus on was uh, you know, blister care, uh, cuts, lacerations, things like that, and uh, immediate triage of those things. Um, but one of the things that I've always found that works out well for clients is I'm going to give you a couple phases. Number one, sometimes you'll have just, you'll end up with a blood blister, either right here in the middle of your hand or maybe up towards one of these calluses and it'll just fill with blood. Okay. The skin gets loose. It fills with blood. It kind of tears underneath the skin, but it does not pop. 
okay? I'm a big fan of just leaving those. So if that, if that blood blister is there and it's not really pronounced or big, I actually will just leave it there because two things are gonna happen. Either one, it's either gonna get, get bigger and, and start to build up pressure and then you could release the blood by maybe just doing a, um, a small little uh, incision on the extra skin and, and draining that blood to release the pressure, but that skin over the top still protects the area while it's healing. Or uh, the skin, if it, if it doesn't get like attacked again, again, and again, and it doesn't fill up with a ton of blood, that blood will just reabsorb back into the body and it just kind of disappears on its own. So you don't have to worry about raw skin. And that's a big point when you're trying to treat tears. That's why we don't like to tear because then you just have this raw skin that just hurts anytime you do anything with it, right? Um, but say it, it actually tears off. So you have a callus that tears off or you have a blister and it skins up and you didn't stop the workout in time. And so it tears off. If you have, if you have just a fully open wound there, okay, um, what I like to use is I take my hydrogen peroxide. I, I would wash my hands with soap and water right after the workout. It's going to sting. I promise that. Use cool water, not warm water. Wash my hands with soap and water. Um, and then when I get home later on, I'm going to go ahead and just use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide just to clean that area real quick. I only use that one time, right? So I'm not going to like keep pouring that on there for the next six days, but I'm going to wash that really good the first time. And then I just use some triple antibiotic ointment. Now the palm of your hand, the knuckle of your hand, it's really hard to cover that guy up with like a bandaid or something like that. You can, but it's going to involve like bandaid and then like some flex tape or something like that. If it's really bad, you could do that. But what I just try to do is I just put a little bit of triple antibiotic and I just leave it on there while I'm going throughout my day. Um, and then it eventually kind of like will run off or, or disappear. And then you just put a little bit more on there. Um, and I really only try to do that for the first day or so to try to initiate that healing process, maybe two days. Um, and then I let it try to dry out because the sooner I can get that skin to start drying out, the sooner it's gonna go back to normal and actually kind of callus over. Um, and it doesn't typically like scab up like, you know, a, a cut on your arm would. Um, it's really just gonna kind of dry up and start to kind of peel and kind of refill in some skin layers there. If for some reason you have a tear though, and it only tears off a little bit, okay? What I do is I go through that same cleanup process, that same washing process, um, but I leave the skin on there. I don't tear it off. I just keep it on there for protection. And I will actually put that triple antibiotic kind of like down inside the little crevice. I know I'm getting super detailed here, but drop that down in there and I just lay, lay that skin flap right over there. Now, if it's more than 50% off, typically we would cut it off. Um, but if it has just a little bit of a tear on there, I try to get that antibiotic stuff in there, leave it in there and just let that skin stay there to keep, to keep it protected. So, um, but again, the whole goal here is to not tear your hands. The goal is to take good care of your hands, of your calluses, while you're working out or before you work out so that you don't tear because it really does ruin your training week. It's not a badge of honor. It's not this like cool thing that we have done. Um, it's, it's not. Uh, it really just disrupts your training week and that's not what we want. Um, so uh, to recap, uh, callus razor, pumice stone or a, or a callus scraper here is what we have here at our house. Um, get on those things every couple of weeks as you see that skin build up. You want a little bit of calluses there. You do want that for protection on the hands and for grip purposes, but you just don't want them over, uh, you know, really big um, to be sore or to tear to create kind of this shelf underneath the bar. Um, it, the other thing too with that is like, Keep your hands as dry as you can during your workout. So bring a towel with you. Have that just in your gym bag so that you can be constantly drying your hands during a workout. Hand protection is great, like using grips or something like that. But now you gotta go buy something, you know, might be a little bit extra. You know, sometimes some spouses might even have the tools that you already, that are already in your house. You just didn't realize you had them. Um, but make sure you keep your hands as dry as possible. And then if you tear, get it cleaned right away. Use a little peroxide when you get home, triple antibiotic. Keep the skin on if it's more than 50% uh, still there um, and not completely torn off. Or if it's a blood blister that has not popped, don't pop it, just leave it. And a lot of times that blood will just reabsorb into the body and it keeps that hand protected so you're not gonna have raw skin there. So uh, I hope this helps. Uh, again, this was kind of generated by a client that was just asking me, hey, I got my first hair, how do I fix it? And then how do I prevent it in the future? Uh, these are the tips that I, would, that I would follow to do so. Take care guys, we'll see you soon.